Hello everyone and welcome to Skillcapped. I'm Notorious Dub and today I'm going to be teaching you everything you could possibly want to know about playing bind effectively by looking at what the pros are doing and covering everything from a bind agent tier list to detailed strategies for each site on attack and defense. Before we get into that though, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn those bells on because we have a ton more premium content headed your way and you don't want to miss out on your chance to improve. Now before we get started with anything else, let's talk about which agents are the best for bind and why. Now, must-haves for Bind are Sage and Cypher easily, because retaking B is close to impossible if the enemy team has a Sage. So two lockdown defenders on defense for B are a must-have, and that Sage is going to help you whenever you're on offense and trying to lock down that B Cypher retakers. And next up we have Sova. So Bind is a wide open map with very narrow funnels, which lets Sova easily gather tons of information and punish the pushing enemies with his ult. And then we have Smoke Agents. Bind is without a doubt one of the maps that require smokes to be able to be useful on attack. Now Brimstone is going to be one of the most consistent. He provides tons of utility on attack and defense and has incredible ult for very critical positions like U-Haul. And then we have Viper. Viper is going to provide probably the most benefit for defender side because she has an incredible one way for mid control and then simultaneously she can use her curtain to set up to go through hookah and cover up B long as well locking down mid and helping out your B players at the same exact time. And then finally we have Omen. Omen should be the go-to smoker to help with the attacker side if you think you're going to have trouble there because the defender spawn is wide open giving Omen a ton of viability for his ultimate as well as his paranoia covers the entirety of hookah. This gives your team free reign to push hookah freely every single round. Alright so now that we have the optimal picks out of the way we have to establish the basics right? So where should you and your teammates be playing on defense? Well, B side is easily the most difficult side to retake because it has such a hard funnel to work through if the enemy team has a Sage on them. And because of that, you want your two best site defenders playing on B. In this case, we see Viper and Cypher playing on B site, with Sage, Rays, and Phoenix playing A site, baiting the enemy in, and then going extremely aggressive for kills. Now the biggest benefit to stacking A site like this is to close out the round and capitalize on the enemy still playing around the site that is stacked. And if you're not going to play aggressive and finish off the kills, you have to be ready to rotate extremely quickly to help out your guys on B site because letting the enemy team rotate out or even TP out causes a very easy round to turn to a difficult one. Now it is worth noting though that Viper and Sage will often swap sites because Viper has an incredibly strong one way for mid control, but both agents perform very well locking down that B site. Now another quick tip, if your team manages to have way too many duelists and no controller or only one controller, put three agents on B, because it's so difficult to retake that it's worth losing that little bit of pressure on A site. Alright, now that we have the basic setups nailed down, let's talk about some critical points of the map. Now first of all we have U-Haul, or Lamps. This area is the focal point of A site. It allows you to peek both sides of the site with either cover from truck or cover from ticket booth. This makes this one area the single most important area to control on A site. Whether you're defending or attacking, being able to control U-Haul creates a ton of opportunity for you and causes so many problems for the enemy team. Now moving on from U-Haul though is Heaven. Once the enemies get on site, Heaven can be countered, but attempting to enter site if someone is Heaven is essentially suicide. Here we see Hiko turn a difficult round into a very easy one because he had the frame of mind to rotate very quickly through to Heaven before the enemies could get on site. With approaching site on bind, you have to smoke off Heaven. Because if not, an operator like this will almost guaranteed be looking down on you with vertical advantage and pick your team off one by one as you try to enter site. Now while it's also important to keep the enemies guessing and go for control of the showers angle or the hookah angle every once in a while, mid control is by far the most important and consistent way to keep truck control of rounds. Now here we see WTCN doing something incredibly powerful which is placing his brimstone smokes where there is a tiny gap to see the enemies enter on either side. Now no matter what agent you're playing, you have to use your utility to control mid, if that's where you decide to play. Now mid is too important of a position to dry peek it and risk dying. Instead, peek with your flashes, push up with your utility, smoke off one side so you can peek the other, or just double peek it with your teammate. Now either way, these quick picks on mid establish dominance of the area, and dominance of an area this crucial wins rounds. Because if the enemy team knows they're going to die if they come to that area, their chances of winning plummet because they're forced to go to worse areas of the map to try to fight for control that's probably not going to be winning them rounds anyway. The next critical spot to take control of on the map is B-Long. 
Now, most people think that hookah is a power position. And while that's correct, it is a very strong position to peek from. It's also very difficult to actually hold that area from a team of rushing enemies. Now, instead, we see more importance placed on B-Long, where the operator reigns king. Now, the problem with B-Long as an attacker is that it's a very long walk to the end, and there's no cover along the way either. And we see Wardell and his teammate abuse that fact in this clip. So playing first contact, Wardell banks on the fact that the enemy is going to walk up slowly to not give away any information. And as soon as the elbow pokes out from the Phoenix, Wardell takes that opening frag. And then we also see why it's so important to peek and fight with your teammates, because the Sage actually saves the round here by saving Wardell. And Wardell then comes out with a clean closing frag on the Brimstone. And from there, the only thing left is to camp the spike and dare the enemies to peek this deadly operator. Now the defender side is pretty much taken care of, let's talk about playing default on attacker side. Now default on Bindy usually contains a 2-2 split in some way combined with a lurker, because this map has so many different paths that lead to a flank behind the enemy team. And because of this, you want to have someone being the lookout for the team while they try to get control of a site. And if they manage to get around behind the other team, it slowly turns into a more and more difficult round for the enemies. Now this lurker is usually going to be someone comfortable with an operator or a duelist willing to fight it out with the enemy. But let's go ahead and see a couple examples from here. All right, so first off, let's start with a side as an attacker. Now, as we talked about before, mid control is vital for the defending team. And if the defending team doesn't keep mid control, the A push gets so much easier for the attackers. So Wardell's team actually stacks that mid push to over pressure and dominate the site before the rotate or flanker can cause problems. Now, the first thing to notice here is before they push in for mid control is that Viper throws a long curtain all the way down the center of sight. And most importantly, over the box in front of the truck. This actually raises the smoke up in that area and blocks the heaven player's vision from the short side of sight. Now this is another reason they do a 4-1 split instead of a 2-2-1 because the shower player doesn't get benefit from that smoke because heaven is still exposed. But with that critical spot of heaven taken care of, Wardell's team bum rushes to take control of U-Haul where they already killed a player. And from there, Wardell pushes out on the site and immediately jet boosts into heaven to take control of that position. And with full control of all of the power positions on A site, the defenders have no chance. From here, they just abuse the angles that they have and close out the round. So remember, when you're taking a site, take it fast, get rid of heaven, and take control of U-Haul no matter what. Because planting with an enemy in U-Haul spells disaster for your entire team. Now B site is a bit different from A site though. Here we see WTCN making a little bit of noise and distracting the enemies on A site while his teammates are pushing up very slowly onto B. And whenever they get into position, WTCN runs over very quickly to smoke off for him. And the most important areas to take care of when rushing B site is the door to CT spawn and the opening to elbow. That's because they're the only places the enemies can actually run to to be safe from rushing enemies. And with those areas taken care of by Brimstone, enemy enemies that want to contest the site have to commit to the fight entirely. So there's no quick peeks and then running to safety. And just like we see here, the Cypher is hung out to dry because of the smokes cutting off his support. And as an added benefit, Sova actually pushes through the smoke to help him and gets him killed as well. This is something that happens so often when you smoke off the defender's support because no one wants to leave their teammate to die. And the hero play from the enemies often just lose them the round. To end off the round, we see the attackers get into a very good post plant position because Cypher is inside the container and Brimstone is setting up the crossfire from long. And this is something I see people get wrong so often. Even if you're in the post plant scenario and you're just trying to let the time tick down on the bomb, if your teammate is fighting, you should almost always peek and fight with them no matter what. Because of that, WTCN finished the round off and doesn't force himself into a weird 1v1 where he has to play ring around the rosy with Sage. So what are your favorite ways to attack on Vine? And are there any strategies or agents that work really well for you? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what map you want me to cover next. Now, as always, we here at SkillCat want to thank you for watching. So make sure you hit that subscribe button with bells on so you can stay up to date with the latest strategies and stay ahead of the pack. Now, I just want to say thank you for spending this little bit of your day with us. And I'm Notorious Dub, signing off.